Conservative. As Minister for Health, how serious do you believe it's going to be here? I believe it's very serious. I believe it's going to require not just a whole of government approach, but a whole of society approach. There is no need for people to panic. And I think that's a really important message. I know a lot of people are worried. Over 80% of us who get this virus um, will get mild illness. But for some of us, we will get very sick. And what we have to do as a government and what we have to do as a society is prepare and particularly prepare to support vulnerable groups, older people, people with underlying health conditions. And there are things we can do and we must do and we will do. And I'm happy to talk about that. But there's also things all of us can do as individuals in terms of trying to slow the spread of this virus, because the best possible chance we have and indeed any country has in terms of dealing with this virus is to slow its spread. Uh, that helps our health service, it helps our frontline staff, uh, and it helps us all as individuals. So there's things you can do in your workplace today, in your home, in your school, in terms of following the public health advice, uh, good hand hygiene, cough etiquette, coughing into your elbow and not your hand, disposing of your tissues, you know, not going around shaking hands, but doing as people are now doing, elbow bumping and the likes. These are practical things we can all do. Uh, businesses looking at how they can where possible, allow a flexibility in terms of people working remotely, if that's appropriate, or also looking at how they can prepare their own workplace so everybody's not working in the same space and therefore has a greater chance of keeping their business open um, should it be impacted. So there's an awful lot for all of us to do. Um, And I want people to know it's really important that every single decision we take will not be political, um, it will be taken on the basis of public health advice. What is the best thing to do in the interests of public health? What are you going to do today? So today, I'm really pleased that our Taoiseach, Leo Varadkar, has convened a new cabinet committee. And this is an opportunity to bring together all the relevant government departments, state agencies, because we all have a role to play. There's things the health service can do and there's things that we need beyond the health service. How can we help support workers who have to self-isolate? If you're told to stay at home from work today, how can we make sure uh, that you can access um, income support? If you're a business, what should you be doing today? And Heather Humphreys, our Minister for Business, is working on measures to try and support businesses at this time. And in the health service, what more can we do? And and I, w- I want to look particularly with, with Paul Reid and the HSE and others as to how we can help particularly older people and vulnerable people. We met patient advocacy groups on Friday. You know, what can we do in terms of providing more outreach care? I think there's a lot of people who are worried they could feel isolated and lonely during this period of time. What can we do to help more provide more home care? Uh, how can we use our smaller hospitals if necessary uh, where they might have capacity to help isolate people if our big busy hosp- big hospitals get even busier? Uh, how can we support our workers? Um, can we help bring people who have maybe retired, public health experts, back? Can we work with our unions? Who I really want to thank them. They've really stepped up to the plate here. Can we work with them in terms of things like having to redeploy staff from one part of the hospital or one part of the health service to the other? So lots of practical measures. Okay. We've already taken a number of actions and we'll take a number of more decisions today and this week. Have you made a decision on paying people who have to stay at home? If people are going to be asked to self-isolate for 14 days to help contain the virus, how are they going to do that with no income? Are they going to get sick pay or are you going to give them statutory pay? So at the moment, as you know, if you are out sick uh, um, or told to stay at home, you can access social protection supports. The challenge is you can't access them for a number of days. One of the things we've been looking at across government is can you can you reduce that waiting period so people can get support more quickly? And that's something we'll be considering today. The best way of doing it is something considering, that we... Have you made a decision yet? Uh, the Cabinet Committee will make a decision today. Um, we met with, and I wasn't, I wasn't involved in these meetings, but the trade unions and the employer representative groups had meetings with government officials officials in government buildings and we'll receive recommendations at the cabinet committee. The only thing we're trying to, we're we're very clear on what we want to do here. We want to provide the support. Uh, The only question that remains is how best do we do that? And we'll, we'll consider that this morning. At the moment, all confirmed cases are being treated in isolation and hospital. How much longer is that going to be the case? So that is a clinical call that will be made by the public health emergency team. And let me just explain why that is. One of the reasons we've been asking people who have tested positive and have the illness, even if they're reasonably well in themselves, one of the reasons they've been staying in hospital uh, uh, rather than self-isolating at home is, remember, this is a very, very new virus. And it's providing an opportunity for our healthcare professionals to continue to monitor and learn more about it. And that information will stand us in good stead. But you are quite correct. You will get to a point in time where it will not make sense for people who have tested positive but are reasonably well to take up a bed when there could be somebody who's positive and not well who requires that bed. So we have a protocol in place um, to enable people who test positive to self-isolate at home and our public health emergency team will decide when to make that switch over. 
What are you going to do when there are more critically ill people than there are ICU beds? What's the plan? So there's a couple of elements to this plan. The first, as you know, is we're expanding ICU capacity and we um, gave another €21 million Euro to the health service last week to open more ICU beds. And they're moving To bring very us up quickly. to about 300, isn't that right? That's about right. Um, we're, they're continuing to look at opportunities across the health service to open more beds and those beds will be funded. We're also going to engage with our private hospitals. Um, it's quite likely that if you got to a situation where this virus outbreaks in a serious way, that many elective procedures in private hospitals could yet be cancelled, so they may have capacity. So we're looking at that as well. Um, we're also looking at one of the other ways you can increase capacity is obviously increasing the workforce, so lifting any kind of restrictions on recruitment. Up until now, obviously, all recruitment, um, you've only been able to recruit funded posts, that's the norm, but making it more flexible to recruit more people, bringing back more experts, and also looking at the possibility of our Model 2 hospitals, there are smaller hospitals, Gavin, uh, having capacity to do more in relation to isolation. I do need to say, and I, and I know you know this, but it's important for our listeners to know this, You know, m- most people who get this will not require ICU. Even those who require hospitalisation, many of them will not require ICU. But it is true that we have a shortage here in Ireland, but indeed there's a global shortage. And, yes. uh, and this is a challenge that we're seeing in health services, we're seeing it initially today. So everything that can be done is being done. But, but people, people need to know that if we got to a point, um, and there's a moderate to high risk of this, according to the European experts, where this took hold in a very serious way in Ireland, that would require a prioritisation of services. It would require for a period of time us focusing on the virus above and beyond uh, other procedures in our hospital. So where will people be treated when there are more sick people than there are beds? So people will be treated in our hospitals. Um, the reality of the situation is we're looking now as we speak, at how we can maximise the number of ICU beds we can provide. Um, but everybody will be looked after, looked after to the very best of people's ability by some of the best healthcare professionals in the world. Um, we, we will not be found wanting when it comes to providing any resources that are required, and the Minister for Finance has been clear in this. Um, our economy is in good stead, thanks to the prudent decisions we've made. We have funding available, we will make the funding available. The question now for the health service and for all of us collectively is, how can we maximise the capacity, both in terms of beds and staff uh, in the coming days and weeks. Italy had 20 firm confirmed cases on February the 21st. Now it's, it's almost 16,000 and they have 16 million people in lockdown. We've 21 confirmed cases and everything's still going ahead as normal. Why aren't we trying to get ahead of this disease? So we really are. And I suppose I'd, I wouldn't accept that everything's still going ahead as normal. We had our first confirmed case of this last weekend. And since then, you've seen the benefit of the work that's been done since January with a number of key decisions made. We've shown a willingness to cancel events as is appropriate. There were a number of rugby games due to take place in this country over the weekend that didn't on the basis of public health advice. We've set up a stakeholders forum to bring together all of civic society, unions, employers, voluntary groups, and that's met twice. There's a new cabinet committee convened. We've changed our protocols so the National Ambulance Service is now doing a really good job going out and doing testing uh, in people's homes, saves them having to come into the hospital. We have information and experts available in all of our airports providing information and we've expanded our ICU beds and we will do more. But it is important to say I mean, Ireland is at an early stage of progression here compared to other European countries. Um, You reference Italy, but look also at France, at Germany, at the UK. But you're right, there is a moderate to high risk. We can't sugarcoat this. There's a moderate to high risk that we will follow a pattern seen in other EU countries. And that's what we're preparing for and it's what we're working around the clock for. France is cancelling public gatherings of over a thousand people. Germany is considering doing the same. Is it responsible to allow St. Patrick's Day festival and gatherings to go ahead now? So I've been Minister for Health for nearly four years and I've learnt a lot in that time and what I've learnt mostly is that if you listen to your public health advice and public health experts you won't usually go far wrong. Our public health experts are considering the issue of St Patrick's Day as we speak and I expect clarity to be brought to that within the next 24 to 48 hours. I've no interest in making decisions to be seen to take action if our public health experts don't believe it'll make a difference but whatever our public health experts guide us on in terms of St Patrick's Day is what the government will go with. The Chief Medical Officer and others are providing us with expert advice round the clock in what is a fast evolving situation. Um, this is changing not just in Ireland but around the world on a very regular basis and we'll meet again this morning um, just after 11 o'clock and we'll have a chance to assess this. But there are also political decisions that need to be made, decisions that will need to be made by politicians and by government. Is it, do you really think that you're, you're showing responsibility by allowing these gatherings to go ahead? 
well, just to be clear, they haven't gone ahead yet. So the, the Italy-Ireland rugby game did not go ahead because the public health advice was it shouldn't proceed. And we will take the same approach to St. Patrick's Day in terms of the public health advice. We will follow that to the letter. We've also published on Friday uh, guidelines for event organisers. I'd encourage people to go to the Department of Health website where there's questions that all event organisers are meant to consider before proceeding with an event. So we will be monitoring this, as I say, on a constant basis and it will evolve and it will change and as the information changes, we'll make that public as well. So there is no decision uh, in relation to the St. Patrick's Day event yet, but I expect there will be very shortly. There are big decisions to be made. It's arguable as to whether you have a mandate to make those decisions. Isn't it time to form a national government? Well, it depends on what people mean by a national government. Is it time? Is it, I want to say two things on this. So the first thing, and, and, and just allow me to say it because it is important. Our constitution is clear. We have a government until the government is replaced. So there is a Taoiseach, a minister, a cabinet working really intensively on this. There's also an opposition that I want to acknowledge are being extremely helpful and responsible and engaging with us. And I spend a lot of my time engaging with opposition spokespeople, uh, leaders and others, and I want to thank them for that as well. Ireland will have a new government in the coming weeks. Uh, and I, I think that everybody needs to reflect on the need for that new government because the new government is going to be dealing with this situation. This is not something that's going to go away in a few days or a few weeks. So I do think there's no room for party political games. There's no room for party interest here. It has to be about the national interest. And I've no doubt all party leaders will be reflecting on that. A national government with all parties represented? Equally, I don't think any party should use this national crisis, and indeed global crisis, as an opportunity to kind of use it as leverage to get into government. There are a number of ways a government can be formed. There are a number of ways of getting to 80 seats in Dáil Éireann. As the health minister, and speaking purely as the health minister rather than any party politician, I do think there's an onus on everybody now to redouble their efforts. My party position on Sinn Féin is clear and remains the same, but there are many ways of forming a new government, okay. and I think that needs to happen sooner rather than later. Simon Harris, Minister for Health, thank you for speaking to us this morning. It's 25 past eight. Yesterday, the Chief Executive of the HSC, Paul Reid, said the number of staff self-isolating at Cork University Hospital was close to 100 since it had a confirmed case of COVID-19. Outpatient appointments at the hospital between today and Wednesday have been rescheduled, but essential services like dialysis, cancer treatment and cystic fibrosis appointments will go ahead as normal. We can talk now to Dr Richard Bambury, who is a consultant